I'm Belinda Sandor. Welcome to Lessons from the Cockpit. Today, we're going to talk about making your workspace work for you. Welcome to Lessons from the Cockpit. This is your tactical and practical weekly training for virtual assistants, whether you've been a VA for a while or you're just getting started. So today I'm going to be your host and we're gonna talk about, is your workspace working for you? Environment is so important, it's so important. So we're gonna dive in deep today about all the things that I want you to think about to make your workspace work for you. So I'd love to hear where you're coming in from. I see you guys pouring in the room. Hello, good morning, Maria. It's great to have you here. Um, so come on in, get cozy, and uh, and let's talk about this kind of a fun topic, you know, because uh, it involves all my favorite things, you know, decorating, technology, you know, all of that. So let's come on in. Now, Lessons from the Cockpit is brought to you by the VA Connection. And at the VA Connection, we work with new, aspiring, and established virtual assistants to help them build thriving businesses online. And we do this through our community, our courses, and our coaching pro programs. So before we dive into um, talking about your workspace, uh, let me introduce myself for a minute. Let me introduce myself. Whoops. Um, and, and while I do, let me know where you're coming in from. So uh, Susie's here from Copenhagen. Teresa's here from Rainy, Kentucky. Tori's here. Frederica's here from Holland. Tammy's here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. There's someone here from New Jersey. And I love what a global community we are. You know, it's it's really seems like um, that's been a, ch a shift at the VA Connection. We've we've had people in 47 countries for quite a while, but but the um, the amount of people who are who are showing up. I love that. Really love that. So, so let me jump into, um, into my story for those of you who um, I'm just meeting for the first time. When I started my business, um, this is me and I call her my little delish. Um, she's 21 now. Um, but this was us in 2010 when I was just starting my VA business. And it was a really rough time for, for me because my life was um, really in upheaval. You know, I, I kind of blew it up. It wasn't going the way I wanted. And, um, and so I decided to uh, leave my marriage. So now I'm, I'm, I'm a newly single mom. I don't have a job. I have a mountain of debt. Uh, and we had to move three times in four years, which was um, in one way great because I got rid of a lot of stuff. It was very cleansing, um, but it's it was also um, it's confronting to move, you know, to touch everything you own. There's so many memories associated with things, um, and uh, and so that that was kind of intense. And then there was definitely you know a struggle, um, just making ends meet and and feeling so crushed you know i just felt like my confidence was was really crushed i was just about to turn 50 and i had expectations for myself that i was not meeting and that was intense you know like well by the time i'm 50 i should own a home and instead i'm selling it <laughs> you know by the time i'm 50 i should be thinking of you know have enough money in my retirement account to be heading in the right direction not the case you know by the time i'm 50 i should be settled in a relationship not the case. Um, and, and so it, it was a difficult time. It, it was a difficult time. Um, and I wanted also to take care of this little girl and I wanted to have our lives, life, even though it was um, everywhere I looked, it felt like there wasn't enough. I wanted to teach Emily and I wanted to live into there is enough, there is enough. And then eventually there's more than enough. And so it was important to me, um, to, to keep that attitude, you know, and there's lots of stories that I've told about about that um, over, you know, over our time together, but really focusing on the glass is half full, which I typically am anyway, but during this time it was a little bit more challenging. It was a little bit more challenging. Um, so I decided I wanted to um, start my own business um, 
because mostly I didn't think that a nine to five, and it's really more like a nine to seven, nine to eight in, in the case of my jobs was going to work being a mom. And I wanted to be there for her. I didn't want her shuffled all around, you know, this play date, that play date until mom gets home from work. I, I didn't want that stress for her. And I really didn't want that stress for me either. So I decided that I was going to start doing admin work. Um, because I was pretty good at it and my mind is pretty organized and I thought, you know, I can help people. I can help people. And not knowing if it was going to fly or not, I started telling everybody that I knew. And I didn't have anything figured out. I didn't have my pricing figured out. I didn't have, you know, any of the things. Um, but I told one of the dads one morning at the school bus stop, he said, what's new? And I said, oh, I've decided I'm going to do admin work for entrepreneurs. And he was so happy because he'd started a business about a month earlier and he was drowning in all this administrative stuff that he didn't want to do and he didn't know how to do. Simple things, you know, like paying his bills or um, setting up his QuickBooks, which I learned how to do when I had a job. So skills that I already had, which is really great. I just kept going and telling, you know, more and more people. Um, and before you knew it, uh, things were turning around. Things were definitely turning around. And now I've been in business since 2010, which is actually 12 years um, in business. And I've worked with over 225 clients and I've earned a million dollars from my home, from my home over that. You know, it's actually, it should probably be updated. It's more like $1.2 million as a virtual assistant doing work for clients all over the country and, um, and all over the world. So it's really been amazing. And, um, and, and at the core of it was really me learning about self-reliance, you know, not looking outside of myself for the support, for, um, you know, for the job, for, for really any of it. And that has me centered and grounded in a way that I've never experienced before. You know, I thought I was safe having a corporate job until I got laid off. And in, in this economy, the, the work is not slowing down. I do not see that at all. You just, just have to know the right places to look where people are pushing through what's going on and making you know, things happen in their life as well. So this is what it looks like um, today. Um, <laughs> this is my husband, Greg, and I on our wedding day. It's been about a year and a half now. And uh, these are our kids, uh, Emily and Greg's four boys, uh, David, uh, Charlie, Stephen, and Andy. And, you know, it's such a relief not to be uh, making minimum payments, you know, and not stressing about credit card debt and not really, you know, it, it, it was the kind of life where, you know, I'm talking on the phone and the phone goes dead and I realize, oh, I didn't pay the cell phone, you know, so I'm pulling over to the side of the road and paying the phone <laughs> on my phone, you know, it's not like that anymore. I'm clear about my finances. I know, I know what's coming. I know, you know, I know what's going out and, and there is a peace that lets me sleep much better at night as a result. So good. We've got Tammy here. We've got someone from Maryland. Um, yeah, I know. I love this community too. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Kukoya is here. All right, good, good. All right, so I want to talk about um, our workspace, okay? And I want to talk about specifically, is it working for you? Now, as virtual assistants, since we work remotely and our clients don't see our work environment, um, you know, it's easy to let things get a little, you know, slippery, a little uh, messy. And and I want you to know that paying attention to your physical space is really important because it impacts your mindset, right? It impacts your thoughts. It impacts how you feel. So we're going to dive into all the details um, and I'm going to uh, really show you what, what a lot of my workspace looks like. Now, the first thing that I, I want to talk about, this is actually the desk I'm sitting at right now. Um, the, the first thing I want to talk to you about is um, your location, because it's really important. You really need a dedicated workspace. Now, I know some of you are digital nomads and you're working from hotel rooms, and that's that's fine as long as you can focus and that and that works. Um, for me, it's important. It kind of there's a, a calming um sense that happens to me when I'm sitting in the same place all the time. Um, I, it's quiet. And uh, and for me, it's off the beaten path. You know, it's really off the beaten path. So people are not um, 
walking by me. I, I've had my desk in um, a corner of the dining room. I've had it uh, in the corner of the living room. I've had it in the house that I sold. We had, um, there were, you know, we had like a regular dining a living room, like a for, not, yeah, formal living room. And then we had a family room. And so I had it in the living room because nobody ever went in the living room. So, you know, you, you can really make it work. And, um, and it, your space really doesn't need to be any wider than your desk. And for most of my career, that was the case. That was the case. Uh, in 2020, by then, all the kids had pretty much moved out, except Emily. And we took our, our guest bedroom and we turned it into my office because, you know, I, I, it helped me more than um, to have that than to worry about where a guest was going to be sleeping. So I took it over. Yes. So off the beaten track. The other thing I like is that I can leave my work on my desk and no one's going to, you know, disrupt it. Um, and I do leave things on my desk in certain places uh, that help me remember what's what I'm doing next and, and, you know, what I need to focus on. So it's good. Now, desk. Um, desk is important. Now, for a many years, I used a dining room table. Um, I liked it because it was really deep. It supported my, you know, all of my work and, um, and it's, and it was great. Um, I have had many desks and dining room tables from Ikea. Um, I know that's a worldwide company. They have very affordable furniture and um, all the furniture in my office right now is from Ikea. And uh, it's nice because it's clean looking, you know, clean lines. Um, the other place you can get things that are, we call them, it depends on where in the country you live. This could be called a garage sale, a tag sale, an estate sale. Um, I certainly have picked up pieces um, that people don't want anymore, you know, and you can make them your own. You can paint them, you can refinish them, you can just put them you know, in, um, you know, in your, in your working space just as it is. So don't, um, yeah, Cindy says, Ikea has such nice organized looking things. Yeah, they really do. So check out Ikea. So dining room tables, I have a standing desk now, which I really love. I don't stand that often, um, but I like, I'm 5'10", and I like that my desk is not touching my knees, and I have plenty of room underneath, um, underneath for my legs. So standing desks are good as well. And as I just mentioned, you know, new, used, borrowed, it, it doesn't really matter as long as, um, you know, as long as it does the job. I also want to talk about chairs. Chairs are important because we are sitting in them all the time. Now, this is the chair that I have. Um, it's called the Herman Miller Aeron. Herman Miller also has a nice chair I used to have called the Equa, and they're expensive. And, and you don't need to you don't need to spend a ton of money on a chair. There are knockoffs of this chair that you can get at Staples. Um, Emily has one, and it works really well. This particular chair, um, you know, it's supportive, it's comfortable, and I want you to think of it as an investment in your health, investment in your health. I have a tendency to have um, back discomfort um, from time to time, and a chair really makes a difference, and my posture, 100% <laughs> my posture. So, um, you know, think, think about that. This chair that I'm in right now, I've had it, I don't know, 23 years, 20, 20 years, something like that, still looks great, it's in good shape. And um, if you have a friend who's an interior designer or an architect for this kind of chair, you can get a pretty deep discount, which is what I did too. Yeah, good point about, um, about health, yeah. See if your community has a buy, buy, a, a buy nothing group on Facebook. There's always tons of free stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and the other thing is, um, there's something, I don't know if they have it here, but when I lived in Boston, there was something called free cycle. So Emily had a bunk bed. I didn't want to deal with selling it. I just was like, can someone just come get this? And we had a bunch of stuff like that. And, um, you know, it, People just come. They, you bring it downstairs, put it on the sidewalk. They come and get it. Uh, and if you live in an urban area, like in Boston, if literally if you put something out on the curb, um, you know it, it'll get taken um, quickly. <laughs> quickly. Yeah, Susie says my my current chair, my chair is my my biggest issue right now. Yeah, yeah, free cycle is great for sure. I think they have it in many parts of the country. So so think about your chair, and maybe you don't have the exact right chair yet. But, you know, put it on your list, you know, add it to your, you know, and, and remember, all this stuff is tax deductible. Okay, if you live in the US, I can say that for sure. Um, it's definitely tax deductible. 
Now, this is the IKEA dresser that I have right next to me on this wall. And um, the things that I keep in here are, um, uh, you know, it's like, all of the little stuff, you know, all the little stuff. So to so the, to manage your paper and to manage your stuff, um, I have a bookcase with all of my books right in front of me from IKEA. I have this sitting right next to me, and I have a drawer that has all my files. You know, and I, I don't really go into my files often. It's more like, you know, th this is just where I keep this when I need it, whatever it is. And uh, so I have them stacked up. Um, I have pads of paper, I have post-its, and I have little baskets from um, the container store to keep things inside the drawers organized. Really important. Um, there's, all, I also have a whole drawer that has wires and I have them in these um, little, they're thick plastic bags that, um, that I purchased at the container store. So I, I have wires according to what they're for organized in there as well. So a dresser, while it might not be intuitive, like that this would be a great thing to have in your office, it really actually has been wonderful. Um, right behind me here, I have um, I have this. This is an this is a I can't remember if it's a nightstand or if it's a filing cabinet, um, but I use it to keep like the things I need right next to me, right? Cords, lip gloss, my iPad. I have my receipts, my hairbrush. Um, I have a little glasses caddy. This is a, this is actually really great because I have a lot of different pairs of glasses. So I have this little caddy right here. Um, it's made by Umbra, and so it keeps my glasses um, safe. Uh, and uh, it, it's nice. It's nice to have this right right behind me, so I don't have to get up, and everything is just right there. Okay, good. Oh yeah, Goodwill. Goodwill is great uh, around me, and sometimes they offer discounts on top price point on the, their top price point. Yeah, so look around. You know, it's amazing. Greg and I go to estate sales around here pretty often, and I found some beautiful, you know, plant stands and little chicken things. And um, um, you'd be surprised. There, we have a. I wanted a, a baker's rack, and um, we found one. It was outside of a barn at a house that people were selling and they're like, take whatever you want. And we looked around and it's in the living room right now. And I'm going to um, sand it and paint it. And we're going to put some shelves on it. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. So definitely look, you know, look around you. Um, it's kind of crazy what you can find. And, um, and I know a lot of you have great imagination and you're crafty, you know, you're, you're clever. Good. So, so this is my Ikea little table. Now I want to talk about um, I want to talk about the cockpit. So this really is what my desk looks like, and uh, I have the three screens, which I graduated to um, after a few years. Uh, I didn't know about two screens, and if you don't have two screens, I I really urge you to figure out how to um, how to make that happen. So you can use a an old TV. You can use, um, uh, you know, an old monitor. It doesn't need to be state of the art kind of a stuff, kind of a thing. You can, you know, you can do a lot of things. Um, and I love this because I have so much working space. I feel, what's the word I feel? Um, the opposite of stressed, <laughs> peaceful, actually peaceful, because I can see my email on this monitor. I can see my calendar here. So when someone's asking me in an email, when can I meet, I can see my calendar and I'm not clicking back and forth between the tabs. Little small things like that are such a big deal. And um, uh, one of my students, I think it was Tori, I think she's here. She said that if you go to Goodwill in January or the end of December, a lot of people, you know, they upgrade. They upgrade their monitors. They take their old ones to Goodwill. The monitors I'm using right now, I've had them for at least five years. I don't have any plans to replace them. They're great, you know? So even a monitor that's five years old or older, Greg's using monitors that, um, gosh, they were the monitors before these monitors. And they, you know, they're clearer and they, they look great. So don't feel like you have to go out and spend a ton of money. It's actually kind of fun to see how you can be creative um, Right with with what you need. Yeah, Susie says could not live uh, live without um, two screens. <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a good trash picker too. Stock the highs the high end areas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Maria says hubby builds stuff out of pallet wood. Yeah, that's cool. 
that's definitely cool. And you can bring things back to life. You know, I, I like that. At that same uh, state sale that we went to, there was a bench and it had, it was like rod iron on the side and then it just had slot slats and the wood was completely rotten and a mess. And Greg was attracted to it. He brought it home. He took all the old wood off. He cut new wood. He screwed it in. We're going to stain it. It's beautiful. It's like this little park bench. And, um, and, and I don't, I just love, I love doing that. It's fun. Yeah. Deborah says I use a TV connected with HDMI. Yeah. Tori says shop around your house. You'll be surprised what you have and could be repurposed and unified with a little paint. Yep. That's right. That's exactly right. Kakoya says my monitor is about 20 years old. I just started using two monitors and love it. Yeah. Monitor technology, you know, like it's, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Nothing to worry about. But you can see I've got some pictures of the family. I've got my coffee mug. You know, I've got some fun stuff. I have my laptop. Um, depending on who I'm working with at the time, some of my clients like to text me and I have a Mac laptop. So I text them with that because the phone is just too challenging. Okay. So I want to talk about um, the new world. All right. There's some things that that we we um, that we need in the new world, and the new world meaning you know post 2020. One of them is we need a camera. You know we we need a camera, and um, and we also need some a mic. And often the mic uh, often the mic comes with the camera, and uh, you can absolutely use that. Now I just bought a new camera at Best Buy a couple of weeks ago. Actually, I remember when it was. It was October 31st because that's the day the Kickstart Challenge kicked off and my camera died. And um, it was an interesting day in the neighborhood here. Um, but uh, I, they have them for, you know, I, I like Logitech and they have all different, um, all different price range, price ranges for sure. Yes, someone else's trash is another person's treasure. Yes. Okay, so Svetlana is asking for my email address. You know what? For your 30, she won a 30 minute strategy session. The best thing to do would email Mandy. She will get you right to that calendar. So Mandy, M A N D Y, at the, the VA connection.com and she'll send you the link. Awesome. Oh, good. So Cindy um, discovered, oh, discovered that the mic in my laptop is broken. I'm in the market for a decent mic. Excellent. Excellent. So th these are things you need in the new world. You know, you need a camera. You can have one. My monitors don't have um, cameras, and I'm actually glad because, you know, I have control over the kind of camera that I have. Um, the other thing uh, that you need in this new world is good lighting. Now, how I have my lighting set up is I have um, um, a lamp in front of me and a lamp behind me, a lamp in front of me and a lamp behind me, and they are from Ikea. Um, one is from Target, one's from Ikea. Neither one of them was more than $20. So you don't need expensive lighting. And then um, I'm sitting right next to a window. It's very gray here today, so there's not much sunlight coming in. Um, but I have blackout um, shades on them that I can pull up or down to control the light, uh, depending on what I'm doing. Good. Now, there are also things that are nice to have. Let's see if I have this handy. I do. Okay, right in my little drawer there. So a hotspot is a nice to have. If you find that you're on the road and you can't depend on, you don't want to depend on someone else's Wi-Fi, this is a handy thing. Um, and I'm trying to remember, we're changing our cell phone coverage, um, our cell phone plan. And I was, um, I was, I was looking at this with the, with the AT&T guy. I don't I, I paid it off. I think it was $11 a month. I paid for this to pay it off instead of paying cash. And then um, it's connected to my, my data plan. And it's a really handy thing. Um, the other is a printer. I don't print that much. Um, and I don't really scan often at all. So that for me is more of a nice to have. Um, and it's not something you absolutely need right away, especially if there's another printer in your house and you know, you're printing like once a month or something, um, not a big deal. I also have, um, I'm going to spell it so I don't wake her up, but A L E X A. Um, and so she's right next to me. That's kind of a fun thing. If I want to know what the temperature is or things like that. And then I have this super cool phone charger. I'll, I'll show it to the boys gave it to me. I don't know if I can do that or not. The wire might not be long enough here. Let me just move the camera. 
like this. So you can see it's got um, a place for my Apple Watch and my, my phone. And I like it because it props the phone up and I can see it. Um, and it, it charges from the back, which is really nice. So you, we, you, so you want to have, um, <laughs> you, you want to, you want to have all those things, things right at your fingertips. Yes. Cindy says we call her, she who must not be named. Yes. Because she wakes up. So those are some nice to have things. Um, I also want to talk about decor. Um, you know, I have uh, this bookcase that I mentioned from uh, Ikea. I don't remember how much it was, but it was probably less than $100, probably way less than $100. Um, and then I also have um, plants. I love plants. I'm a big plant person. Um, and I have my window. You can see my my view. And then I took some time and I, I um, framed Emily's um, artwork. And it's funny. I saw something like this in a magazine a really long time ago it was beautiful but i couldn't i i didn't want to spend a lot of money on custom framing so i talked to emily about it and what we ended up doing i'm gonna um, make this bigger what we ended up doing was we bought these uh frames from michael's which is a craft store here in the u.s and we cut the artwork to match the frame so it didn't really matter if you know there was an inch missing here or half an inch missing there and so it was an affordable way to get a, a lot of her artwork up this right here um right here this is was a giant her very first finger painting and i thought well it could stand under the bed or i could cut it and put it in my office and remember it every single day so um so things like that i think are important to how we feel you know because i i feel like the office is is it's organized and it's bright and it's colorful i've got some other artwork over here of emily's let's see if i can show you and again these are in you know in frames um, and we cut the artwork to match the size of the frame, which never didn't occur to me for a long time. Yeah, Frederica says, um, for bigger art frames, also Ikea. Yes, for sure. For sure. That's great. And, and uh, Deborah says, I use a HP printer and have the ink plan and paper plan. It's about $11 a month. That's great. Yeah, Frederica said, I framed a lot of our boys' artwork in Ikea frames. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's great. And the other thing is don't forget things go crazy on sale right after the holidays. All right, good. Okay, so uh, what else? You know, what else? You want to have, I have scissors nearby. I always have um, post-its. I have clips. Um, I, ha I do have a calculator. I mostly use my phone or I have Excel open all the time and I just put the numbers in there. Um, I have my favorite pens. I always make sure I have, you know, five or six of these pens in a, a cup next to me so I never run out um, of them. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's good to really think about it. Um, someone says, I have so many pieces of art that need framing, but I never got around to it. Yeah, it's, it can, well, it's very expensive to, to frame things um, sometimes. So to be creative. And I think when I bought most of these frames, um, they were on a buy one, get one. You know, so just keep your eye out and just jump on it when you get a chance. Jump right on it. All right. So we're at the top of the hour. I'd love to hear, you know, any thoughts you have about this. Take time to remember that your environment is important. Give yourself the gift of looking up and seeing things that you love. I have a big giant plant. I have a, a heart that Emily um, painted uh, that says uh, it's red and, and I... <laughs> it says, I love you and love is L O V. And then the E's on another line because she, um, you know, she painted it when she was probably four. Uh, and here, um, I see, um, I had old horse show ribbons made into, Oh, Oh, I would love to see a picture of that. I can't tell who this is, but I had my old horse show ribbons made into a quilt with photos of my horses on it as well. That's on my wall in front of my desk. I would love to see that because Emily has so many ribbons. I'm talking I uh, probably a hundred. And that's the question now. Where do we put them? She what we did was we have a uh, like a nice looking rope going all the way around the perimeter of a room and she hangs them on that. Um but it's uh you know it, it's really nice. Uh, I'd really love to see that. Yeah um I have a I have a bathroom right across the hall too. Oh it's rain. Oh okay rain great. 
Great, great, great. Plants and family pictures. I have that too. Yeah, really nice. Great. All right, you guys. So let's, it's time to wrap up. I do want to, um, I do want to remind you, if you haven't heard yet, we're doing it again. The rumors are true. We're going to have the VA client kickstart challenge again on um, January 16th, January 16th through 20th on the 16th, 17th, 18th, I gotta use my fingers, 19th, we're going to open doors to VA school. So if you have been thinking about joining us, please put that on your calendar. Um, sign up at vachallenge.info. There's a pop-up Facebook group. We just let 50 people into it yesterday. There's about 10 more waiting today. And the action is starting. The action is starting. Also, when you're part of the Kickstart Challenge, um, you'll get an email. And I believe it talks about the resources page absolutely check that out. I just updated that with the last challenge and all the videos are new. There's, I think, eight or nine videos on how to get a steady stream of clients. And you can get a chapter to my upcoming book, which I'm going to start working on again here, probably in February, um, all about getting clients. So there's no reason to wait, but come join the fun. The more, the merrier. If you've done the challenge in, in the past, do it again. If you're in VA school or you've graduated, come do it again, right? Bring some energy, bring some life into your business um, by attending this really exciting event. Good, good, good. Okay. Oh, great. Thank you, Rain. Um, all right. You're welcome, Teresa. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. So have a great rest of your week. Um, if you're in VA school or the VIP club, we have all kinds of events happening this week. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.